In the meantime, the vaccination rate in the United States is slowing, threatening the Biden administration's goal to have a 70 percent of adult Americans receive at least one dose by July 4th. Joining us right now is Dr. Marty McCary of Johns Hopkins University. He predicted that the United States would reach herd immunity by April. His new book says, The Price We Pay, What Broke American Healthcare and How to Fix It. That book is now out in paperback with a new section that looks back at COVID-19. And doctor, thanks for being with us. You, you were with us very early on in the pandemic, just warning about the concerns and the dangers that were there. You, you wrote very early on about the, the need for universal masking, but you've kind of come full circle to say that maybe things need to move a little more quickly and that things have improved more quickly than, uh, than health officials have kind of let on at this point. Well, good morning, Becky. It's good to see you. You know, I think there's a lot of good news out there, and I think that people need to hear that good news right now. People have an entirely distorted perception of risk. Remember, COVID now has a different case fatality rate because it's circulating in a much younger population, in a population where the case fatality rate for COVID is now similar to that of seasonal flu. In the past, comparisons were not fair, but now we're seeing a similar case fatality rate, and 1 50th the number of cases of flu on a daily basis uh, in the uh, compared to a mild flu season. Right now, we've got 1 50th the number of daily cases of this virus. So people have a distorted perception of risk. They need to be careful if they're unvaccinated and not had the infection, but we need to move on at some point. You have written in the past and, and talked about how you think we'd reach herd immunity by April. Are, are we there yet? Yeah, I think we have very high uh, levels of population immunity right now, but I think the concept of herd immunity was one that got misinterpreted as eradication. And I said very clearly in the projection that we were going to see uh, COVID circulate for decades to come and that we need to be prepared for the fall. So I think we're using the term population immunity right now so people don't misconstrue herd immunity as a finish line or something that's binary. But I do think you're going to see it circulate in younger communities, and that's different from the threat that was posed just, say, two months ago. So would you not encourage younger populations to go out and get vaccinated? Do you think it's not a risk and, and, and not something you would tell people to do? Because we are seeing vaccinations drop off incredibly rapidly. Well, I, I think people need to recognize that there are two reasons to get vaccinated. One is to prevent death from COVID, which in healthy kids is so exceptionally rare, it would be considered a case report. And as a matter of fact, there's never been a documented case of a young, healthy person dying of COVID. And we've done some of that research at Johns Hopkins. All the uh, children that have been examined in half the nation's health insurance data have had a comorbidity. So if they have any pre-existing condition, get the vaccine. Otherwise, the reason to get it, it, the case to get it is there. It's just not compelling. And the reason to get it is to prevent the multi-system inflammatory syndrome, which has affected 4,000 kids in the United States so far. The other reason to get it is to protect other people that you could come in contact with, even if, if it doesn't affect the kids as much. What about if you come in contact with grandparents who or someone who has an immune uh, immuno, uh, immune compromise situation? Um, I, I mean, Marty, that, that's pretty different than what they are telling people right now. Just are you OK with the drop off we've seen? You think that this is not a big deal or you also said look out for the fall. What, what do we do to, to brace ourselves for the fall that we haven't already done? Yeah, very good point, Becky. Well, first of all, about 86% of seniors in the United States have had the vaccine, and about half of the unvaccinated have natural immunity from prior infections. So we've done a really good job protecting. If children are around anyone who is not vaccinated and has not had the infection, then it's important for them to get vaccinated. If children are around teachers and school administrators who have gotten vaccinated, is that not a big deal either? I mean, we know that the vaccines aren't perfect, but they have been very good at preventing death and, and, and incredible sickness. Yeah, the case is there, but I would say it's not compelling for a healthy kid. Remember, most of the folks they're in contact with are already immune. And I think we need to recognize that, um, that everyone's got to make their own individual risk and we need to uh, push things hard when we see a very strong survival benefit. And in young, healthy kids, I think the case is there. It's just not overwhelming. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.